Carolina Córdoba, from Colombia. She seeks to fight poverty and lack of employment in the Pacific coast of Colombia by creating a program that allows women heads of households to have independent and economical options through entrepreneurship. She will do it through stages of education for personal development, technical training for entrepreneurship, and supporting these new ventures. Thank you. We also have Matilde Lozada from Peru. Her project is EmprendeLegal.pe. It's a platform that provides legal advice online to small entrepreneurs that are starting a business or have one and wish to formalize it. The project also tackles the problem of informality in the business sector of Peru and contributes to the overall development of the country. We also have Camilo Santa from Colombia. He has a social enterprise uh, that crowdfunds for agro agroforestal projects of ex-combatants in the post-conflict of Colombia. He does this by selling source bottled water in which 50% of the Evitat goes to this social cause. Right now they're seeking a seed capital of $30,000. Thank you. And with that, we're gonna go to our final project presentation of the day. Last but definitely not least, uh, we have Antonio Quiorebeun from Argentina. So my name is Antonio. I know it's really hard to be there for one hour, so thank you very much for your patience. Um, in the following minute, I'll show you an X-ray of my community back in Argentina. So there are 30,000 Koreans jumping around in the beautiful city of Buenos Aires. And in 2015, we commemorate 50 years of history, which is just a proper time to do some homework check on our community. So how did we do? The first Koreans went to Argentina with nothing but their shirts on their back. They were extremely poor, but with hard work, they succeeded. My parents, for instance, they went with nothing but $20. And yet, they managed to give me and my brothers plenty of opportunities. Koreans succeeded through the textile business. So yeah, are we up at the top of the, of the hill? Why? Why? The revenues of the textile business created a phenomenon similar to the one known as the oil curse, applicable to nations with several and plenty of natural resources. The revenues of the textile business created disproportionate wealth and consequently suffocated other entrepreneurial activities within the community, specifically in the second generation, which chose to follow their family business and consequently remain in their comfort zone. So our goal, so today I ask myself three questions. How many Korean Argentine political leaders do we have? How many Korean Argentine social leaders do we have? How many leaders in the private sector do we have? And the answer is none. That is what we intend to change. Our goal is to find and identify young, talented Korean leaders within the community, inspire them to grow ambition and to take the extra mile, guide them into taking leading roles in the public, private, and nonprofit sectors in Argentina, provide them the necessary tools for them to shape their reality, and therefore reach Argentina and Asia through multicultural, young, and diverse leaders. The following meetings I will divide it into these four segments. And let me start with the first one. Was I the first person in thinking in such a great idea? Of course not. There have been several leadership courses before in the community. But they all felt in one specific thing, following up. They felt in giving continuity to the program. They felt in providing support and incentives to the participants. So we have designed a five days leadership camp, highly dynamic, full of workshops, just at CCL, divided into personal development and identity, negotiation and communication skills, 
and basic knowledge about the public, private, and non-profit sectors of Argentina. But there are two more distinctive features in our program. The first one is that we will place a private camera within the camp so that the participants can record personal messages to their parents, and in this way we can strengthen the bonds. And the second is that we'll provide monthly meetings to give continuity to the program, and monthly coaching to monitor the evolution and the progress of each participant for 12 months. Our target customers will be mainly uh, Korean parents with a deep interest in their children's education, and of course, Korean students between the age of 18 and 22, with basic requirements such as a minimum GPA of seven, and knowledge in Korean, English, and Spanish languages. In turn, we will provide 30 scholarships to 30 students. So, our partners will be the Korean Chamber of Commerce, of which I am a member of the board, the Korean Embassy, of which I am an independent consultant, the Overseas Korean Foundation, of which I am already a fellow. <laughs> the Government of the City of Buenos Aires, of which I am an employee. <laughs> the Korean Association, of which I am an advisor. And ultimately, the GCL program, of which I am a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, this is like a math. <laughs> so, how much do you, have to, do you have to invest in this? With less than $100 per month for each participant, you will be able to empower them to shape their future. With less than $100 per participant, you will be able to raise the leaders of Argentina. Our team will consist of a logistics coordinator, a social media and communications coordinator, and a general assistant. Of course, Superman and Wonder Woman, they don't exist. Either. And me, uh, we'll be leading the, the project. So lastly, who wins in this project, to sum up? Korean parents, because they will strengthen their bond with their children. Korean institutions, with a new generation of young, diverse leaders. Korean community, because they'll gain influence in Argentine society. The Korean students, which, with whom will have the opportunity to grow. And mainly the Argentine society, to which we will provide multicultural leaders. The last question is not actually to me, but to you. Do you believe in this change? If your answer is yes, welcome to this project. My name is Antonio. Thank you very much for this.